asked, and he would just go, for Christ's sake, let's get on with it. The phony war of the group games was over. It was do or die against the Welsh. Let's make sure we start against these guys very, very direct. Very, very direct. They are shitting themselves, those Welsh guys. And they are not used to it, and they won't be ready for it. The moment we walk out that door, guys, this is what we've been working for for a long, long time, you fellas. No fucking hiding place. Do not leave to the guy on your left, the guy on your right. It's down to yourself. There's no fucking hiding place. We are not leaving this ground without the win. No hiding place. Let's go do a job. Let's fucking be inspired by what's going to happen now. Let's go. Wales caught England cold. They outplayed, outpassioned, and overran them. Whichever daft sod thought we'd beat Wales by 40 points, they'd shoot it. I mean, Wales, England in a World Cup quarter final is, is always going to be close. And now Luger! Six years of flying in the face of rugby tradition was threatening to come to nothing. We saw errors from the team that we've never seen before. And you've seen Cracky were in the World Cup quarter final here playing against a, a bloody good team in Wales. And suddenly the, the Lincoln Welsh team are just running through us like we're the under 10s. It was a little bit like, Christ, this could be our worst nightmare. You had to lose to Wales in a quarter final of a cup, and that would have been our worst nightmare. We were, we were struggling at half-time, we, we had a very poor first half, but we went in at half-time, no panic. Um, well, not, no, mu not much, anyway. I was anyway. getting abused in the tunnel by that Welshman, <laughs> and you right behind me. <laughs> Calling me Rodney Trotter. Come on, Rodney, you're going to lose, boy. <laughs> at half-time, I remember Clive coming in, the guys looked tired, I felt tired. Um, the humidity was draining us, and I thought, bloody hell, we're in trouble here. And it almost felt like we'd, you know, uh, punched ourselves out. Johnson let fly. He really lost it in the changing room, which but he needed to do. He needed to make a statement to the team. He did it within about a minute of being in there. Now, considering one of our team rules is we, we stay quiet for the first three minutes while we, while we change our shirts, he just blew all that away and just went for it. What are you going to do? You're not going to pack it in. You're going to go out there and, and, uh, and go for it. And um, If that was our last 40 minutes in the World Cup, then it was going to be a good one. Johnson's passion had bought Woodward five minutes of priceless thinking time. Luger came off, and Cat, the one surprise selection of Woodward's squad, was given his chance. Mike Cat came on and was uh, inspirational in what he did, as he is as a person, not just as a player, but this time he came on and, and, uh, and really added to the game enormously. Saviour came on. I th I, yeah, the saviour. <laughs> the turning point had come from a player who had only been playing the game for three years. Ransacking rugby league for a mercurial player like Robinson was another of Woodward's maverick decisions. I do feel it's my natural ability just to, to go and run. I would say if, if I don't know where I'm going, then you know the opposition team is, is certainly not going to know what to do. Because um, sometimes I set off on a run and I haven't got a clue where I'm going. You know, I just try and find a space. He has green but outside! That's true. It's a rush, you know, when you, when you do, you know, create those opportunities, when you do beat men, you know, you sense a crowd, the crowd are, you know, on the feet. And, um, you know, it does give you a rush as a, as a player. You know, that's, that's basically why we're there. The try gave England hope, and they ended up 28-17 winners. But it was never comfortable. It was always hard work, and uh, we were happy to get off the field at the end of the game. The margin of victory flattered England. How Woodward and Robinson made virtue of the team's dire performance would prove critical. We won the game. Um, and we're now in the semi-final of the World Cup. Nothing changed but we're going to win this thing and we're 100% going to be France on the weekend. What we do need to do is just sit down as a whole group and watch tonight's game and have a real kind of uh, shut the door Honestly, open meetings. It's about some of the things we did that I think started uh, a bit of a chain, a chain reaction. One thing we are is quite brutal. Like, the coaches are brutally honest and they expect the same of the players. So, you know, 
you're the sort of first. If you have a bad game, you are the first to put your hand up. And if if you don't, the coaches will tell you whether you've had a bad game or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, after say the Wales game, you know, we had a sit down. We had a bit of a a bit of a, a bollocking. I'll make no apologies now. We are going to pinpoint some people in the room, and if anyone's got an issue with it, that's been over dramatic and should leave the room now because we've got to get this right. You've got to pick on players, and the bigger the player, the bigger the name the bigger you've got to pick on him. But also you know he will take it fully. Deep down he'll be hurting, but he'll understand this is the game and we're here to win. Lawrence, you're walking. You're still walking. Look at that. All we've got is 13 players in this area. So again, we're playing narrow. And then we're playing narrow because we're walking. And we're watching. I've taken plenty of criticism in my career. I mean, you know, we're all big enough and strong enough to cope with it. Um, you know, I played every, every minute of every game, so I must have done something right. He's the guy who's always going to prove you wrong. And that, that's what you're trying to achieve without playing games with him. And, um, but he played against Uruguay, he was great. I, I thought very clear about making him captain. And I thought, no, that will wind him up even more. If I don't make him captain, he's going to be even more annoyed. And we've got to get this guy back to his best. The critique of senior players like Delalio was designed to fire up passions within the team. Woodward's exultation of another player had a totally different agenda. After the, uh, the the Welsh game, that every, everything was leaning on Wilkinson. That suddenly England hadn't played that well because of Johnny Wilkinson. So I just made this massive point to the to the team that that also when they were reading the stuff in the press about Johnny not playing well, it was all hogwash. He'd played fantastically well. It was a lot of the other players hadn't risen to the occasion. The way Johnny played out there was awesome. And I'll tell you that we watched his performance yesterday. Defensively, if he hadn't played, forget the goal kicks. If he hadn't played defensively, he would have lost the game. Because he's running around, his enthusiasm is above anybody else's in the team, and in defence especially. So I just want to say that publicly, because I thought it would be awesome for the weekend. And I think it's the rest of the team that could actually understand what's going on here. He's an extraordinary player, uh, and you, but you could just see what was going to happen with the media. They were determined to kind of uh, burst his bubble, and he, he, was, he was awesome in that World Cup, absolutely brilliant. The pressure on that guy is immense to deliver. And he could just have that one off day and miss every kick at goal. It could happen even Johnny Wilkinson. You know, he would never live with himself. You set your own expectations so high that the majority of the pressure or the pressure that you put on yourself far outweighs that that comes in from anywhere else. So really, you know what you're fighting against. You're kind of fighting against your own, um, like I said before, your own goals, your own values and your own peace of mind. He's the world's best player. So who is anyone, especially even me, as his coach, to say we're doing it wrong? I think he is the world's best player. Not his goal kicking, the way he conducts himself on and off the field. Everything he does, he steps up the mark and wants to improve, improve, improve. At the end of a kicking session, if you're two minutes away from finishing, and those two minutes, you're not happy with those two minutes, and those two minutes then turn into another hour and a half, um, and you end up missing appointments, you miss you know, wherever you're supposed to be, or. or you put things off or you phone up and cancel things and you go and do another hour and a half or whatever. That might seem obsessive to some people, but to, to others that gives you the right and the peace of mind to sit there in the evening and relax and, and uh, if there's any evening left, you know, and watch the, and watch the, watch the telly and, and actually have a clear mind, you know, and, and, and sleep well. And I, if I don't kick well, then I'm so anxious, I end up waking up early anyway and, and go and do that extra hour and a half 